what is the one of the main difference of the both the returning wall is this height 5.5 meter if your returning wall that means a cantilever returning wall is having the height of the 5.5 meter then we can go for the 5.5 meter that means returning wall only cantilever if it is more than 5.5 meter then we need we need to go for we have to go for the counter foot returning wall now to, now the question is that what exactly the counter foot counter foot is nothing but this one this is what exactly you are seeing here for the returning wall the one of the kind of the support given by one wall this is we called as a counter foot okay this counter foot is provided only because of the rising height that means the height is more than 5.5 meter at that point we are providing the counter foot counter foot is very important because to do not uh, allow the sliding or over uh, sliding or different types of the failures not not allow in the different situation for that the counter foot retaining wall is normally used more than the height of the 5.5 meter now coming toward the counter foot retaining wall portion like what are what things are the counter foot retaining wall consisting of counter foot retaining wall consisting of the counter foot itself then steam or we can also called as a upright slab toe slab and heel slab the projection from this toe slab is called as a toe projection the projection for the heel slab is called as heel projection the projection for the toe slab is from this point to this point and for heel slab is from the this point to this point okay the height for the counter foot retaining wall is given by small h okay and the heel is represent there is a at equal distance of the counter foot are provided for the retaining wall okay there is i draw only one retaining one counter foot only but at this point also there is one uh, counter foot okay so at a l distance like l distance like in general features you can see that the spacing for the counter foots that is l is between is 3 to 3.5 okay so counter foot is where it it is placed at the 3 to 3.5 meter uh, after distances okay so now this is all about the counter foot retaining wall the height okay the steam toe slab heel slab counter foot okay and the uh, repetition of the counter foot after 3 to 3.5 meter only now after that when we din we are now up to it we done with the spacing of the counter foot wall now we are going to deal with the thickness of the base slab what is the thickness of the base slab thickness of base slab what is the thickness of the base slab we have that means what is consisting of the thickness of the base slab is always given by for the counter foot retaining wall is twice l into h okay twice l into h this is what in centimeter we will get okay h is a height total height okay h is total height this is h is normal height h is a total height from this point from this point to this point okay from this point to this point total edge okay now the to twice l is nothing but this length okay and h is nothing but total height okay now after that the we i can write here the l is nothing but this spacing you know and h is nothing but overall height of the retaining wall in meter like i can if i if it is necessary if i if i can draw it like from this point okay and i don't want it to L up to this point. Okay, this is what the L we have. Uh, sorry, H we have. Height capital H. Okay. Now after that, the base width. Third is what base width. What is the base width uh, re required for the cantilever retaining wall? Is given by the formula 0.6 total height to 0.7 of the total height. Okay. Now after that, what is the toe projection? Like I told you, the from this point to this point, it is toe projection. So four is what toe projection? Toe projection. So toe projection is given by one fourth of the width of the base. One fourth multiplied by width of base. Okay. Now after that. Uh, as i told you in my first cantilever retaining wall there some de design principles also so here i am also going to teach you some design principles for the uh, counter foot retaining wall which is we taken as a b portion uh, it is like design principle design principle 
principle. Okay, so this design principle I am going to uh, deal with right now. So, uh, first is what the first um, first design principle is like. The steam or upright slab is designed as a continuous slab to span between the counter forts. Okay, so steam or upright slab is designed as a continuous slab. That is a what the steam and upright slab you are seeing here. Okay, I write here the steam or upright slab is designed as designed as the continuous slab continuous slab okay and continuous slab to what to span like these are the span okay to span uh, between the counter forts Okay, the other counter like between this counter forts, the slab like here is also one counter fort. Okay, so with this that with this counter fort also there is a word continuous slab is designed. Okay, we can say that there is counter fort. If I can if I can draw so I can uh, I I'll try to draw it right now. Okay, so it will be more helpful for you to get uh, get properly identification. So don't worry about this. Actually, I tried to. Uh, with this but fortunately I don't have the proper scale okay so you can see here. okay so I think it is not at the proper distance okay but remember like uh, I can draw here for years uh, okay I cannot make it here it, it may be at some distance but uh, remember the distance between these two is L okay so now so main thing is that the steam or upright slab is designed as a continuous slab to the span between the counter forts only okay so now uh, here what uh, we have the maximum bending moment so what is the maximum bending moment uh, came from for that it is like we it is a uh, we can write is as here maximum bending moment so what we get the maximum bending moment which formula okay so maximum bending moments okay so maximum bending moment we are getting like the load capital L square okay load capital L square by 12 so this is what the formula for the maximum bending moment where we get so where the rho p is like what is the p here the small p is nothing but the pressure intensity as base okay pressure intensity okay intensity at base okay and which is given by which is given by w h okay w h upon 1 minus sine of phi sine of phi upon 1 plus sine of phi this is what the formula from that we can get the pressure intensity okay at the base now the after that the toe slab okay the toe slab is designed for a soil pressure and a dead weight of the slab what is exactly the toe slab we are going to do it like uh, the toe slab okay if it's if it's not uh, visible to all i'll visit i'll make it visible to you all okay so like here we can see the toe slab okay so toe slab is like a uh, uh, toe slab is designed for the soil pressure and dead weight of slab okay toe slab is designed for is designed uh, for soil pressure for soil pressure and dead weight of slab weight of slab okay and then uh, hill slab is designed as a continuous slab supported between the counter force and the hill slab okay 
The slab is designed designed uh, as a continuous slab as a continuous slab supported between counter forts supported uh, between counter forts now why the hill slab is designed like uh, to resist the weight of the soil and upper pressure at base this is what uh, one of the main reason why we can say why we uh, constructing this uh, here to slab so the re main reason is that to resist the weight of the soil to resist the weight of the soil okay and uh, upward pressure at base at base so this is what one of the main reason for that we are going to design the hill slab now uh, why we are going to uh, design the um, counter force okay so for counter force i'll just change my page okay wait a minute now yes you can see that the for counter forts okay counter forts okay for counter forts the thickness is same as the base slab for counter forts the thickness what is the t is same as base slab remember this thing okay for counter fort the whatever the thickness is same as the base slab now after that the counter fort is designed to take the lateral earth pressure that is one of the important uh, function of the counter fort so why counter fort we are going to design because it take it is it it is designed to take uh, the counter fort design sorry design to take design to take lateral earth pressure lateral earth pressure okay so only because of that what is the maximum bending moment in counter fort we get okay so only because of that because of the lateral earth pressure for this counter fort we are going to design for the lateral earth pressure so only because of that we get the maximum bending moment in a counter fort right maximum bending moment in counter fort wall so which is given by the very it is very simple like given by the cp okay cp cp multiply by w h q sorry w h q by 6 multiply by length that is what the formula okay here h is a height okay and l is a spacing of the counter fort wall so okay so it is a very simple one uh, during uh, solving the problem you can simply understand how this uh, all the formula come how it is a bending moment what is the bending moment i given to you on with respect to that we can simply solve the numerical there is no need to worry about the different different type of the formula okay it is really very simple when you going to solve any sort of the numerical of the counter fort or cantilever written in word i will definitely tell you each and every problem now if i uh, give you some example of the counter fort written in word at uh, in numerical what the value are given to you like height of the wall above the ground level shape bearing capacity of the soil angle of internal friction density of the soil spacing of the counter fort and material these all these things will be given to you to solve the counter fort returning wall okay so what are the steps like whatever the steps you are going to use in the de designing of the counter fort first of all you need to determine the dimension okay if you take if you de determine the dimension okay if you dimension 
if you determine the all the dimension after in dimension what you need to define you need to define the minimum depth of the foundation private depth of the provide depth of the foundation what is the overall height of the wall okay thickness of the base slab then design of steam you need to you need to design then you need to check the stability all calculation okay after checking the stability calculation you need to go for maximum and minimum pressure at the base okay then after that you need to check the design of the toe slab check the movement in the toe slab what are the movement then you need to go for design of hill slab after design of the hill slab you need to go for the um, uh, connection between the counter fort and upright slab and after that you need to go for connection between the counter fort and hill slab then it is at the end of the uh, at the end last you can get the all the design like the reinforcement you need to draw okay so it is really very simple don't think it is really very hard okay so from all this calculation all the all the whatever i teach you i just request you guys that just please visit my website www.civilnurse.com and try to subscribe my channel and tell your friend like yes there is one channel where where you can get the all civil engineering not all the what is probable uh, videos um, at the at website at that channel okay so don't forget my name is paragpa and if you search on youtube you will simply get my channel so keep watching keep learning and then have a nice day bye bye